we're here today at City College, the place that you graduated from a number of years ago. Thank you, David. Why did you pick City College? I was accepted at CCNY and I was accepted at NYU. And the reason I went to CCNY is NYU was charging $750 a month or a year. I couldn't handle that, family didn't handle that. So I took CCNY because it was free and because it was easy to get to and I'd heard a lot about it. And you grew up in the Bronx? I was born in Harlem, about a mile from here, and I grew up in the South Bronx section of New York, the Hunts Point section. And your parents were immigrants from Jamaica? Jamaica. Yep. So growing up uh, in New York, did you enjoy New York as a young boy? I thought it was a wonderful place to be a kid. It was such a diverse place that it, re it, really, it really bonded on me, that this is what the world is, full of people of different backgrounds, cultures, colors, you name it. And of course, CCNY uh, replicate that rep uh, perfectly. I learned a little bit of Yiddish working for six years in a, another corner of the South Bronx, uh, at a place called J6ers, which sold uh, juvenile furniture and carriages and toys. He was a Russian Jew. Uh, it was me, there was an Irish driver and an Italian uh, salesman in the store. And one story I love to tell is after I'd been doing this for a couple of years with Jay, he came up to me and he put his arm around my shoulder and he says, Kali, Kali, a Jewish Yiddish diminutive. Kali, Kali, don't think you can stay here at the store. This will go to my, 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 my daughters and to their, to their husbands. I want you to get your education and go somewhere and do something. And I had no intention of staying at that store and being uh, what's called a schlepper. Somebody just drags boxes around. It's your schlep. Everybody knows what schlep means. It touched me so deeply that I remembered it for the rest of my life and wrote about it in my memoir. He thought enough of me to tell me that I should get my education and move up. And that's what I did, and then CCNY was the source of that education. Did you ever think that one day you would be the chairman of the Joint Chiefs and the Secretary of the State of the United States? No. People ask me about this all the time. It usually starts out with, what year did you graduate from West Point? And why did you go to West Point? I couldn't, I couldn't have aspired to go to West Point. Well, did you go to the Citadel, or did you go to Texas A&M, or Virginia Military Institute? I said, no, they wouldn't let black guys in then. It was beyond any possible level of aspiration or expectation, but it happened. Why did it happen? Because I got a quality public school education that I didn't know was of that high quality at the time. Elementary school, junior high school, high school, and then CCNY let me in with my modest average. And it was ROTC and CCNY that really made the difference. Now you were a geology major. Did you think you were going to go into the geology world? Or? No, I was a geology major because I busted out of civil engineering, okay? Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't need to come up, David. Thank you very much. <laughs> when you graduated, you, uh, when you're in ROTC, you have an obligation to go into the military. You went to the South for training. I graduated in 58 and then went to Fort Benning, which was still in a segregated state in a segregated city, Columbus, Georgia. So I knew well that on post, I was like anybody else. But as soon as I left post, there were places I could not go, stores I could not go into, places I could ne never think of even ordering a hamburger. And I was thrown out of hamburger joints in Columbus, Georgia. They just would say, we don't serve you? It was even worse than that. I stopped at a little hamburger joint late one night, and I knew I couldn't go in. So I just went to the window and asked for a hamburger. And this nice white lady from New Jersey said, I'm sorry, I don't know why, but I can't serve you. You can go around the back. I said, no thanks. So I went back on to the base, and uh, that was in early 1964, and then the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Accommodations Act, was signed in July, just before July 4th. And on July 5th, I went back to that hamburger joint, and they served me. And what, what America discovered is that segregation was not just a burden for blacks, it was a burden for whites. We're living in a crazy system. You went to Vietnam and you were injured? Yeah. And you came back to the States and you went back again to Vietnam? About five years later, I went back and got injured again, yeah. And when you came back, um, your career really took off a bit. You became a White House fellow. I did. I was one of about 15 people who would serve one year in Washington in one of the offices of the cabinet. In my case, I worked in the Office of Management and Budget. Uh, and I learned a lot about government in that year. Hey, after your White House fellowship, you did back, what? I went to Korea, to command a battalion, infantry battalion in Korea. Hey. That's a year that I've considered uh, one of the most rewarding years I've had in the Army. We were just starting out in the volunteer army, and it was my opportunity not only to train 
these young people, but to give them a GED education and English as a second language. You eventually went to Europe? I was in Europe as a young lieutenant for two years, and then the period you're talking about is I worked for Cap Weinberger. The Secretary of he Defense? He was the Secretary of Defense, and I was his military assistant, his senior military assistant. And we became exceptionally close. And after two years, it was time for me to move on and get back in the Army. And they got me an assignment in Germany where I was going to take command of a division. I was now a two-star general. And then one day, the chief of staff, General Wickham, walks in and says, uh, we, we've changed. I said, what have you changed? Sir, the family's packed. We got the house, the whole stuff, the stuff's moving. Mr. Weinberger wants you to stay here for another year. I said, and not take a division? And that's right. And then he said something which was quite right. He says, just remember, Colin, you're here to serve. And you serve where we need you. I can find division commanders anywhere. Mr. Weinberger, the Secretary of Defense, wants you to stay longer. Yes, sir. And then I went in that evening to see Mr. Weinberger, Secretary Weinberger, and he knew I was kind of disappointed. And so he looked at me and he said, well, you know, Colin, you're not going to get a division now, and I know that disappoints you, but next year you're going to get a corps, and that's two divisions. Right. Corps is a much larger organization, 70,000 people in the Fifth Corps. And a year later, he let me go, and I went to Germany and took command of the 5th United States Corps, headquartered in Frankfurt, guarding the Fulda Gap, one of the invasion right. routes we expected the Russians to come So in. that was a great job. It was a great job. 